Well, welcome to The Boiling Point. I'm Richie Ware, and this is Tom Garbarino. A special treat to have him with us. Tom is a family business, actually does all of our deaerators for all of our rental units, and Tom was gracious enough to help us with this, uh, this unit here that we use for all of our trade shows and our Boiler University as well. Right. And uh, we, it's a great training tool that we get to actually use to show people about the, the, the aerator. Now we're live here at uh, Boiler 2024 uh, and there's tons of manufacturers here and uh, Tom is one of them. First Tom, tell me a little bit about your company, where you're at and uh, how long you've been in business. Yeah, so we uh, were formed in 1946 by my grandfather um, in Brooklyn, New York. Um, the company moved out to Long Island in uh, 1969 uh, and then moved down to North Carolina in 1991. Uh, my son Michael is involved now, he's fourth generation. Um, and we manufacture deaerators, condensate systems, boiler feed systems, uh, fuel oil pumping and treatment systems, and that's the main focus of our business. Yeah, awesome. It's a great partner of ours, and uh, in all of our rentals, you'll see the VFS. Uh, yes. tank in there, so which is awesome. Right, well, why don't we talk about what is a deaerator first, because okay. that's what we're talking about so, today. A deaerator is pretty important in a high pressure steam boiler room uh, to pre-treat the water. It serves multiple functions. It, it uh, not only preheats it to minimize thermal shock going into the boiler, but it also removes the dissolved gases, uh, oxygen and CO2, which could be very corrosive in the boiler and in the, uh, the boiler system. So uh, it serves two functions as well as storing feed water to be pumped to the boiler. Okay, so this particular uh, deaerator, why don't you talk about how it actually works? Okay, so this is a spray type deaerator, or more technically, a spray scrubber type deaerator. So uh, there's two stages of deaeration in most deaerators. So the first stage is uh, spraying the water into a steam space. So that happens up in this area through that spray valve. Uh, and what you want to do is get the water sprayed in, in thin sheets, uh, which allows for uh, the gases to escape um, and break the surface tension of the water. Uh, then the water is collected and directed down into a scrubber. The scrubber is the second stage of deaeration. So it, this is where we want to get the fine traces of uh, oxygen removed. Uh, you accomplish a fair amount of deaeration just by spraying it, but to get the fine traces out, that's the real important part, and that takes place on the scrubber. So what we want to have is a lot of agitation and action in there. So the steam is mixing with the water in that scrubber and violently mm. scrubbing it and able to remove the final traces of uh, oxygen. Uh, now, the key part is we've removed all this oxygen from solution, we want to get it out of the tank. So uh, the gases will, uh, the steam acts as a carrier gas and removes the oxygen up through the vent pipe to atmosphere. And then the water is then pre preheated, it's uh, heated up to saturation at five PSI typically. Uh, so it's at 227 degrees and it's ready to be pumped to the boiler and give your boiler extra long life. Awesome. And so this is a spray. Right. Um, so what, what are some other deaerators? Uh, a tray type deaerator is another popular uh, uh, style of deaerator. Um, it, it still has the, the first stage where you're spraying the water into a steam space, but then the water cascades down over a bank of trays, and that's the second stage where, you, again, you're scrubbing out the, the final traces of oxygen. Um, usually the tray types will have a vertical tower where the trays are, and then when the water cascades down through the tray stack, then at the bottom it, it goes into the storage tank ready for use. Okay, maybe talk a little bit real quick about you, the pressurized tank versus like a just a condensate, you know, or a uh, feed water tank, just right. normal feed water. So we want to have a pressure, pressure differential so then you have the differential to be able to drive the oxygen out the vent. Um, a vented system is subject to atmospheric contamination continuously. So okay. you could do some deaeration in an atmospheric environment, but you're constantly getting recontaminated with uh, atmospheric pressure because uh, there's no it's, it, it's, it's vented. So. Yeah, you know, we have some folks sometimes that are new to this, but really what does oxygen do in the water to tubes and to the boiler? Well, it's, you know, you get oxidation, you get corrosion. Um, the, the dissolved gases also act as an insulator. So they could, they could form a, a barrier on the tubes in the boiler, mm. which reduces your uh, heat transfer efficiency. Yep. So multiple benefits by getting all that out of there before you pump it into the boiler. Okay, cool. Now we are building a 200,000 pound an hour uh, mobile DA right yes. now. and. Uh, uh, hopefully going to be out soon, yep. right? Uh, I think we got the tank, or the, yes. we already got the deaerator, didn't we? Okay, um, and I know they're putting that together, but what are the, the, the sizes that you actually put together? What do you build? What's the biggest that you build and what's the smallest? That you I mean, we've packaged, you know, our, our, our forte is packaging systems. Yeah. So, uh, you know, with pumps, controls, uh, so it's an integrated total solution, gets to the job site, they put it back together and, and hook up their electric steam, water, and they're ready to go. Mm -hmm. uh, so, of course, we're subject to some limits of packaging because as the DRs get bigger, they're just taller. And, and so, yeah. but we've packaged systems up to 500,000 pounds an hour with pumps and controls. 
Wow. So, but we could build deaerators larger than that. They just typically are not packaged. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. Very cool. Now, part of the deaerator are pumps. Yes. And we have two here. Why do you use two pumps? Well, you know, typically uh, one pump per boiler is a good idea, and then have an extra one just in case you need, uh, you know, one breaks down, you, you, know, you have a standby. Mm -hmm. So in this application, it's probably feeding a single boiler. So we have one pump feeding the boiler, or one pump as a backup in case you need to swap over uh, to refer a repair or uh, just equalize runtime. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Well, uh, any other things you want to point out? Well, I mean, here we got the level control. In sure. this case, it's an electric level control, uh, controlling a modulating electric uh, feed water valve. Uh -huh. um, one thing that we definitely want on deaerator is a modulating feed water inlet. We don't want to have it on off, so we don't want a solenoid. Okay. Uh, we want to be able to modulate that uh, flow into the deaerator so it, it can maintain a steady state, as opposed to getting slugged with a huge bunch of water and then nothing. Right. So right. modulating is very important. Yep. Um, and then, you know, typically level switches, so a high level alarm in case the, the, the water inlet valve gets stuck open, you have a flood in the tank, high level alarm, a low, low level alarm that could be combined as a pump cutoff too so you wait if your tank runs dry your pumps aren't you don't destroy your pumps um, you know a sight glass um, that's all pretty typical equipment and of course this is very key right here is the steam pressure reducing valve because again we want this tank to operate at a positive pressure to drive the gases out to atmosphere so typical operating pressure is 5 psi so the boiler might be operating at 125 psi we need a reducing valve to take that down to tank operating pressure and then there's a sensing line that'll run from the pilot on the PRV to the tank so what typically will happen is when you spray cold water in that steam environment you start dropping pressure because you're collapsing the steam so okay. the, the pilot says uh oh need more steam opens yeah. the valve less more brings it back to 5 psi and shuts off so. awesome awesome well you can actually get that modulating feed water valve at boilerwarehouse.com that's my one plug. That's all, that's all I get. <laughs> hey, uh, appreciate it. Thanks yeah, a lot, man. Thanks so much for all that you do for us. Absolutely. and great partner for us, and we appreciate it. And we'll see you next time on The Boiling Point.